Within the higher education community, we speak of models of self-study. Researchers such as Alexandria W. Austin advocate contextualized models for educational assessment. Contextualized models, such as the one presented in this podcast, acknowledge the importance of specific institutional sites, the environment, so that complex contexts may be better understood if we're to maximize student talent. Here at NGIT, we're taking a view that student learning and its assessment is best represented by a contextualized cyclical model. I'm Norbert Elliott, chair of the NGIT Middle States Commission on Higher Education Self-Study, and I'll present this podcast. Within the self-study process, we have benefited by careful review of the many guides provided by the Middle States Commission. In our first year, Characteristics of Excellence and Self-Study, creating a useful process and report, were invaluable to us in framing our self-study questions and forming our working groups. With our self-study design approved on April 6, 2010, we're actively seeking ways to make our many self-study processes into a single, cohesive, unified framework. At NGIT, assessment of student learning is regularly performed by the Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology, the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Businesses, and the National Architectural Accrediting Board. Since we have so much in place, we began to wonder if we could use the existing NGIT program review process to create an enhanced model to bring together all of our accreditation and self-study processes so that we might record within a unified framework all that we do. As we enter into our second year of our self-study, we've been turning to the Middle States publication Student Learning Assessment, Options and Resources, as a kind of touchstone for our activities. This publication is helping us clarify the existing principles and methods we currently use at NGIT for setting goals for student learning within the context of institutional mission and existing strategic planning efforts. During the summer of 2010, we've added a most welcome researcher to the NGIT community, Dr. Ian Gatley, our new provost. A physicist by training, Dr. Gatley served as chair of the National Optical Astronomy Observatories before coming to NGIT, and that role is proving useful to his collaboration with the self-study effort for two reasons. The first is that he's used to building community among researchers who see themselves as autonomous agents. He's a fan of seeing the whole in the particular and would agree with Nobel laureate physicist Richard Feynman, who reminded us that nature uses only the longest threads to weave her patterns so that each small piece of her fabric reveals the organization of the entire tapestry. In the particular, there is the whole. The the second reason that Provost Gatley's training as a physicist is useful to the self-study effort is that he's profoundly practical. To that end, he again would agree with Richard Feynman. It doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is. It doesn't matter how smart you are, Richard Feynman noted. If it doesn't agree with the experiment, it's wrong. So Provost Gatley has called for something at once symbolically robust and experimentally verifiable. Here is the model he's helped us to imagine. Begin, he advised, with a permanent NGIT mission, an NGIT President Robin Altenkirk's strategic plan, 2010 through 2015. In these two places, he reminded us, we will be able to identify the core goals of the university, the values we hold most dear across time and circumstances, and the ways we currently interpret those values in our planning efforts. The cyclical model then turns to an examination of the ways we integrate these core university goals into our many programs, from those that award degrees to the programs offered by the many NGIT units, such as the Robert W. Van Houten Library. As the third phase in the cycle begins, we turn to our existing NGIT program review model and investigate how our enhanced model will allow us to move beyond audits to an authentic means of establishing the ways students learn and the many ways we assess that learning. Here we seek to provide a forum for innovation as we share with each other the traditional and avant-garde ways we engage in instruction and assessment. The final phase is most interesting. Provost Gatley has encouraged us to interpret broadly the reporting guidelines offered in the publication Assessing Student Learning and Institutional Effectiveness, Understanding Middle States Expectations. 
We were reminded that their documentation of existing assessment efforts is typically a, a living, fluid, organized collection of documents and resources, often with references to further, more detailed documents and studies that are updated as an assessment process evolves. There is not, Middle States notes, any prescribed format or organization for these materials. Institutions have maximum flexibility in designing and assembling assessment documentation that best fits with the institution's mission, organization, and needs. So, we wondered, why not document the many things we're already doing to articulate a model of contextualized educational assessment? If we understood our effort as a documentary one, an effort to provide evidence that substantiates what is otherwise a claim, as Harvard University researcher Robert Coles defines documentary work, we'll be able to assemble proof that we're indeed paying the closest attention to anything and everything that plays a part of the NGIT community we're attempting to prove that we know. And of course, that information will then allow us to gauge the extent to which we are indeed fulfilling the NGIT mission and strategic plan. The NGIT cycle of student learning thus appears to be symbolically robust. In the following podcasts, we'll determine if it is empirically verifiable.